Hello everyone, welcome to a new video from TechOza. In our video about power generation, you might have seen that we use non-renewable sources like coal and oil to produce electricity. This causes a lot of pollution and is harmful for the environment. You might have also seen sources such as solar and wind energy which does not cause any type of pollution. In fact, the earth receives a lot of solar power that is about 173,000 tetrawatts. This is 10,000 times more than what the planet's population uses. Okay, so why can't we use solar energy to power up the entire world? Is it really possible? And do you know how solar energy is used to produce electricity? Yes, by using solar panels. So in this video, let's learn about everything about solar panels and how it produces electricity. Before we get into the working of solar panels, let's have a look at its history. In the 19th century, it was observed that the sunlight striking certain materials generate detectable amount of electric current which is known as the photoelectric effect. This discovery has led the foundation of solar cells. Solar cells have gone to be used in many applications. They have historically been used in situations where electricity from grid was unavailable. There should be an inventor behind this, right? Yeah, but in the case of solar panels, there are a lot of inventors who had a lot of resources on solar energy to produce electricity. From 7th century BC, our ancestors started concentrating sun's heat with glass or mirror to light fires and for more. The discovery of the photovoltaic effect in 1839 by Edmund Bechtel was the meaningful step in solar panel technology. It occurs when a material produces electricity when exposed to light. Alexander Staleto built the first solar cell in 1888. It was based on the outer photoelectric effect which explained why electrons get emitted on exposed to energy like sunlight. Solar cells were sold commercially for the first time in 1955. A company called Huffman Electrics produced solar cells at 10% efficiency and sold them commercially at Rs. 1800 per cell. At this price, a present-day solar power system would cost almost 30 crore rupees. Then on which solar cells started to be used for various purposes. In 1967, Soyuz 1, the first man-made spacecraft powered by solar cells, was launched. In 1981, the first solar-powered airplane was built. In 1999, 1000 MW solar plants were installed in many parts of the world. Later on, people started using more and more solar energy to produce electricity. But do you know what actually a solar panel is? A solar panel is used to convert solar energy into electrical energy and it is made up of smaller units called solar cells. The most common type of solar cells are made from silicon which is a semiconductor and is the second most abundant element on earth. A combination of solar panels arranged together is called a solar array and is used to produce electricity on a larger scale. As I mentioned in the starting of the video, a solar cell works on the principle of photovoltaic effect which means that light energy or solar energy is converted to electricity when exposure to sunlight. And as you know, the semiconductors does not conduct electricity well. But under certain conditions, they can conduct electricity well. The semiconductors in solar panel has three layers. The top thin layer consists of silicon and a small amount of phosphorus. The electrons of phosphorus forms an excess amount of electrons in the top layer which are free to move. And this layer is called n-type or negative type layer. The bottom layer consists of silicon and another element called boron which has fewer electrons than silicon. Due to the deficiency of electrons, they are less conductive and they are called positive type or p-type. When the p-type and n-type conductor is connected, it forms a p-n junction. The electrons can flow around the p-n junction leaving a positive charge on one side and creating a negative charge on the other side. 
The electrons of the negative type region try to reach the p type region which creates a negatively charged region. Similarly, the holes of the p region material try to reach the n type region creating a positively charged layer. The region between these two layers is known as the depletion region. You can think of light as a flow of tiny particles called photons shooting out from the sun. When one of these photons strikes the silicon cell with enough energy, it easily penetrates the depletion region. Due to the deficiency of charge in the depletion region, it contains neutral atoms. These neutral atoms are broken when the photons from the sunlight strikes the depletion layer. This knocks the electrons from the neutral atom living behind the hole and producing free charge carriers. Then the electrons move towards the n-type layer and the hole move towards the p-type layer due to the electric field present in the depletion region. The mobile electrons are collected by thin metal fingers at the top of the cell. From there, they flow through an external circuit doing electrical works like powering a light bulb before returning through the conductive aluminium sheet on the back. Each silicon cell only puts out 0.5 to 0.6 volt, but you can stick them together in modules to get more power. A solar panel is a combination of several solar cells connected in series. For an example, 30 solar cells connected in series produce an output of 15 volts. 12 photovoltaic cells are enough to charge a cell phone. But it takes many modules of cells to power up an entire house. In our previous video about power generation system, I have told you that around 80% of the total energy in the world is produced by fossil fuels, which is bad for our environment. And only 2% of the total energy in the world is produced using solar energy. The production of electricity using solar energy is really eco-friendly. So, why can we use solar energy to power up the world? The answer to this question is very simple. The solar energy around the planet is not same and it is inconsistent. In some days, the climate could be cloudy or rainy, so only a lesser amount of solar energy will be available from the sun. Also, there is no solar energy at the night time. So, the total reliance of solar energy would require us efficient ways to get electricity from sunny spot to cloudy ones and effective storage of electricity. Also, if sunlight is reflected instead of absorbed, or if forced out electrons fall back into a hole before going through the circuit, that photon's energy is lost. The most efficient solar cell still converts 46% of the available sunlight to electricity and most commercial systems are currently 15 to 20 percent is efficient. Also, there are various limitations on using solar energy as the main source of electricity. We would need a lot of funding to build the infrastructure and a good deal of space. But usage of solar panels for household purposes are quite applicable because we can reduce the consumption of electricity from grid even though the initial cost is high. And nowadays, solar cells are getting better and cheaper. In the world where most energy production comes from non-renewable resources, people are trying to find efficient and cost-effective ways to use renewable energy. Solar panel has been one of the great pillars of renewable energy technology. Are you still thinking why should we use solar panel if initial cost is high? Among all the benefits of solar panel, the most important thing is that solar energy is a truly renewable energy source. Also, it can further reduce electricity bills. It can reduce air pollution, reduces the usage of water for power generation, reduces dependence on non-renewable energy sources like fossil fuels, helps fight climate changes. And today we have everything from solar-powered buildings to solar-powered vehicles. So that's it about solar panels. Hope this video was informative for you. As always, if you have any doubts and queries regarding the session, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. So see you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.